this man of God to give the, the Lord's message today. We're going to welcome Pastor Alan. Please stand. All righty. Uh, extend a hand to him. We're going to pray. Father God, I love you. I thank you for this man of God. Jesus, I love Pastor Allen, but, but honestly, I do not want to hear from him today, Lord. I want to hear from you. Yahweh, we called you by name. We worshiped and we praised you. Jesus, I thank you for this man of God, but we want to hear your message, Lord. We want to hear your voice, and we want to hear it straight from the source, Jesus. We love you, we bless you, and in your mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Do it. 
what he came to do and doing what he is asking of us to do is not well to satisfy God. Yeah? That nourishes us to say, God is not an option, he's a necessity. Churches are not museums that display perfect people. They are hospitals where the wounded, the hurt, the injured, and broken find you. Yeah? And it's so good, it's so good that this time it just wants to be healed in here. You've heard people how they be healed, how it was easy to, to forgive people once they encountered Jesus. Because something's got to happen in your heart and in my heart before we move on into a place called transformation. Amen? So when you come here, this is a great place. We have nice lives. We have good worship. But we're not perfect people. Okay? Uh, at one point in your uh, going here, you might get offended. But that's just life. Amen? Because we are, uh, because you and me are here uh, with a mess. Okay? But there is somebody who takes care of that mess and changes it and, and, and heals it. All right. The fire of man has no power over those burning with the fire of God. Amen? Amen? But if your house is on fire, go out. Don't say, I have the fire of God with me. Okay, just go out if your house is burning. And uh, we will never change the world by going to church. We will only change the world by leaving the church. Amen? By leaving the church, we will change the world. But the thing that I want to speak to you about this morning is to be the church that will change the world. To be the church, to be the church that will change the world, okay? Um, and lastly, I think this is the second and last lesson. If you're not hungry for God, you're probably full of yourself. Okay? I mean, we could go home after this and just pray and you, you got it. Okay, if you're not hungry for God, you're probably full of yourself. Okay? The world's darkest hour needs the church's greatest power. The world is going through its darkest hour. Did you know, and this might not be news flash to you anymore, that the world is not going to get better. Okay? People are crying for peace here, peace there, but things are not going to get better. Just look at how history is, is happening. It gets worse and worse and worse. And it is this moment that the church needs to be in its finest hour. Because we have to be the church that will bring hope by being the church. Amen? Okay. And uh, this is the topic. This is the title. The Axe Church. The Axe Church. Now, the Axe Church talks about how the church was in the beginning, uh, in, the, in the book of Acts. Okay? And I want us, I want to take you to the story of how the church started, started in the book of Acts. Because there's something that we can get out of there, that we can bring from there and bring here and live here. I am not saying that we have to be back then, back then, because back then the world is totally different. It didn't have internet, it didn't have Wi-Fi back then, it didn't have all these technologies. The world was simple, okay? They only had probably one or two currencies, but now there's a lot of currencies. The world is more complicated now, but one thing that we don't want to lose is the passion of how the church was Especially now, I think this is what God is bringing us into. Beholding, because he has a purpose for us. Our families planted in this place. Our, our lives planted in this place. When we go to our workplace, when we go to our school, he has a purpose that whenever we get stirred up and awakened from the inside to that purpose, we bring fire to wherever we go. Because that's what the world needs right now, the presence and the fire of God. They don't need counsel. They don't need steps one, two, and three. They need the presence of God. And you all find out what the presence of God does by being here in ETR for two days. Amen? The Acts Church. Okay. We need the fire and the passion of the early church to influence the 20th century world. Amen? Amen? The, 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 fire, the, the, passion, the, the fire and passion of the early church back then, we need that. We need that. We, we, we can't afford to become people who say we know Jesus, yet we're passionate. No, nah, we're not passionate. Yet we, we kind of dampen down the standards of the Word of God in our lives. Yeah? Where 
we say that we, we know Jesus, we follow Jesus, yet we follow different things in our life. Okay? We need the Father and the Father. Because those are the things that will allow me and you to overcome first the things that are going on personally in me. Amen. How many of you can say we're all messed up? But there's a God who fixes the mess. Amen. Then you can say that. Because, you know, I'm an extreme myself. I'm a messed up guy. But by the grace of God, by the mercy of God, by the move and the spirit and the word of God in my life, I get, I, I'm being made whole. I'm being changed from glory to glory. So if you're here for the first time, don't ever, don't ever look at us as people who've been put together. We are still being put together. Amen? In the process, you know, of being put together, God is preparing us to become the church that will tell the world and say, you can be put together too, like we really are. Yeah. And you know, there is power when we say that now because we've gone through it. We've experienced it. Okay? Second Timothy. Okay? Second Timothy chapter 2, 5. It talks about people in the last days. Okay? It says, having a form of godliness in them, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Okay, this is not a negative word. Before you run out of this place, I had the ushers close the door. Okay, before you run, you run out of this. Having people, in the, but the Bible was talking about people in the last days. We're going to be in church. We're going to be in the world, having a form of godliness. We may look like Christians. They may, they, they smell like Christians. They dress up like Christians. They talk like Christians. The power is not there. The power of a changed life is not there. Yeah. The power to become an influence to others is not there anymore. Amen. We were in, a, in our small group meeting last week, and somebody said this. I think it was Edna. Edna? Edna no. <laughs> she said this, that she heard somebody talk about a Bible belt. transformation, there is power. It's a form of godliness, but the power is not there. Now, we are going to be the church where we do not profess to be godly, but we want to experience and walk in that power every day. The power of a transformed life, the power of witnessing to others, the power that, 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 that we prove that what God is saying for us is true. Amen? Um, it says here, because of the increase of wickedness in the last days, the love of most will grow cold. Okay? Because of the increase of wickedness, back then, uh, you know, the church started in the book of Acts, and it was pure, pure life, pure church. And later on, as you read from 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Paul started talking about sexual immorality, about fornication, about because that's when people started joining the church. I told you we're messed up people. Because you and I are here, it's going to be messed up. But we, we're not stopping there. We're not declaring that. Okay? It's our mess sometimes when we allow God to touch and heal that. It becomes a testimony of God's goodness and grace. But because of these things that abound outside of our walls, four walls, here we're okay, right? We're, we're safe here. We worship the Lord. We talk about Jesus. It's easy to become Christian here. But when we go outside, that's when it, we, get, we, we get tested. That's when the real you is out. When nobody's looking, okay, when your small group leader is not there anymore, if your disciple or isn't there anymore, that's when, that's when the real you comes. And by the grace of God, because we encounter Jesus, 
we had gone through the threatenings of God. Amen? If you had a real life changing experience, you should act out the life that you want it to say. Okay. Jeremiah. I love this verse. I first got, I put it down in this verse last year when uh, we went home, and I preached it to one of the churches back home. And I want to share this with you this morning. It's not the central, but it, it says something great. Jeremiah 6, 16, it says, Thus says the Lord, stand in the way and see, and ask for the old paths. Ask for the old paths where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your soul, but they said you will not walk in it. Okay? And I think God is speaking to this to us as a church. Going back to how the church was in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, Acts, that's the old way. We're not being fanatical. We're not being old-fashioned. And sometimes old-fashioned is good. Do you agree? Old-fashioned fashion is sometimes good. Okay? That says the Lord, stand in the way and see. They are in a crossroad of their lives right now. In other versions, it says, stand in the crossroad and see. Where, which path are you going to go? Ask for the old path. Ask for the ancient ones. They're old, but they work. Okay? They, they're old principles, but they work. It might be for the church right now. It may be for your money. It may be for your marriage. It may be for something that you've been going through. You will find what the, what, what the principle of God is saying regarding your situation. Ask for it. What should I do? Where is the good way to go? Amen? And then you walk. You start walking it. You may not understand it. You may not know where that road is going to take you. Start walking it. Because right. when you do, you will find rest for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Probably right now you're restless. Probably right now you're anxious. All we need to do is pause, stop, and ask God, I'm in a crossroad right now. Where do I go? And when God tells you where to go, you walk in it. And you will find rest for yourself. You will find rest for yourself. But going back, bringing that back to where we are right now, the church, okay? Which direction is the church? Which direction are we? Which direction are we going as a, as a church, as a member of life, okay? In, in our small group, in our discipleship, in our worship, okay? You know, you, you heard uh, Pastor Bobby um, speak about pressing. Open up, open up, open up. 
before they even put one foot in the church. But we have to do that. But there is some factor that when we are restored to the atmosphere, we don't have to do exactly what we're doing, but the atmosphere of being filled with love, of being, being filled with, 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 with the power of the Holy Spirit, so that when we go out, it is like us convincing them that it's the presence and the Holy Spirit of God being with us through us when we do this. We don't force signs and wonders, but signs and wonders is our way. We become a vessel where whenever we speak to people, you know, God speaks to our hearts and we speak that to people. That's a sign and a wonder. And then we don't have to convince people. Because when you tell them straight from the heart of God to their heart, how do you know that? Did you read my mail this morning? No, it's, it's the spirit of God telling you because he told you that. There will come a time when we will, we will walk, and I think that is true, we will walk in those days. We need to walk in that power. We need that atmosphere in the church. Amen? Let's, let's see what the characteristics of the Acts say. Because now, you know, um, we read about the church having a form of godliness but denying the power of the law, right? A lot of, a lot of things are going on. I, I, I was reading, I was studying, and I read about this thing called progressive Christianity. Have you heard of progressive Christianity? It has a form of Christianity, yet their standard about their word of God is different. They get themselves led more by their experiences rather than by the truth of the Word of God. Their interpretation of the Word of God is based on how they feel and how they experience it. So it's different with every person. But they go to church, they lift their hands, they sing to the Lord, a form of godliness but they deny the power of the Word of God. Amen? So back in the... This, this, this is uh, from the thing that we read. This is what we found out. The early church, the Acts church, it was spirit filled. It was filled with the spirit of God. How many of you know that more than anything, this is the one that we need? We need the spirit of God. Praise God, He gives it to us liberally. Praise God, He doesn't make us walk on our knees before He gives it. But whenever He senses that humility and that brokenness, God, you had an option, but you, you were my descent, you're my need. He comes down and fills us. This is what we need. We need to keep on welcoming the Spirit of God and welcoming Him. You know, we don't need new programs. Good pro programs are good, but we need the presence of Jesus Christ. There will come a day, and those days are coming, that when people walk through those doors, when people walk through your houses, when people walk into your area of influence because you are so filled with the Spirit of God, they start getting convicted already. Their hearts are being melted already. You know why? Because you have honored, you have welcomed the Spirit of God in your life. That is supernatural living. That is acts in the modern world. Amen. They received the word of God gladly. They heard the word and they didn't count after they heard the word. Amen. They received it. It could be painful at first, but they received it gladly. You know why they received it gladly? Because they acknowledged that that word is going to change them and give them life. Amen. They received a strong word and because it offended them, they didn't go to the other church. You know why? Because there's no other church that way. It's just a church. But they received the word gladly. It hurt, but they received it with joy because they know that this is God's word. How is our attitude towards the word of God now? How do we receive? Are we here right now and we're looking at our clock? Because you know, the line is getting longer at Luby's. I need to be there by 12.30. Or at the, the taco place. No, I need to be there by 12.30. The line is getting longer. Finish up with the word, Pastor. Will you please? God's going to go back to being hungry and showing honor to the 
the simplicity of the gospel. Yeah. Amen? They continued steadfastly in the apostles' teaching. What was the apostle teaching? The gospel. Yeah. They were teaching the gospel, and they continued steadfastly. Yeah. Amen? The gospel that told them, you, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. They believe that. But the gospel doesn't stop there. The gospel continues to say, put out the old man. The gospel continues to say, put on the new man. The gospel continues to say, stop the morality. The gospel continues to say, give, and it shall be given back to you. But so many times people, they, they go to the gospel like it's a buffet. They pick whatever suits them. Oh, I, I like the word about salvation. I don't like the word about giving. I don't like the word that requires me to stop living the way I want to live my life. Come on. But we have to be consistent. We have to believe the gospel. You know what? Because it is the power of God and the salvation. Not only salvation of soul from hell to heaven, but the salvation of I've said this twice this week, and this is the third time that I'm going to say it, okay? The Word of God, if you're not reading it, okay, you're saved, but your mind is rotten. That's why you, you, you're saved, yet you're thinking the same way that you were before you got saved, because you have not filled yourself up with the Word of God. So you're rotten. You don't see any change, you don't see any transformation, and then you say, oh, I've been a Christian for this long, and how come I still see this thing? It's because you've never, you've never eaten and filled yourself up. You've never said that in following the word of God in your life. You do not, you, we cannot have pick when it comes to the word of God. Back in the days, they believed the whole gospel. Sometimes we love the word about salvation, about the goodness and the mercy of God, about the faithfulness of God. You're beautiful. You're wonderful. <laughs> but then the Bible says, I need to go out and show them how good I am uh, and how wonderful I am. No, I want to stay here. Uh, You're wonderful, Lord. Uh, and there comes a time when the time is coming, and it is now, when God matures yes, us. Right now. God matures yes. us. And by His love, by Him loving on us, we get matured. He loves us to maturity. He loves us to perfection. He loves us. So that it's not going to be a struggle for you and me to go out and tell how good, how faithful, how great is the Lord that we serve. Amen? Amen? They broke bread and they fellowship. They acknowledged that what Jesus has done on the cross, <laughs> they moved the cross. Sometimes it's some other, it's some other cross. <laughs> as long as you know what the cross is for, you're good. <laughs> Fellowship. Okay, are you in a fellowship? Okay. Fellowship is not this. Fellowship is outside. Okay. Fellowship is relationship. Okay. Fellowship is sometimes you don't let, have to like. You don't have to like each other, but because of the love that you have for the Lord, you stick together. Fellowship. Okay. They broke bread. Prayer was a big part of their their lives. They prayed. They knew that the only person that can help them is God, so they prayed. Right. They didn't have credit cards, they didn't have loans, so they really had to pray for their needs to be met. Okay? They didn't have uh, all those things, the convenience that we have now. Okay? Because of the things, sometimes abundance is good and sometimes it's not good. Because when we're so filled with abundance, we tend to trust God's lesser and lesser. 
Back then, life was simple. They had nobody to trust for their needs other than the Lord. Why don't you go back to the situation of Adam and Eve? It's good to be blessed. It's good to have money in the bank. It's good to have cars. You know, but you know, let's use all these things for His blessing and for His glory. Let's not allow these things to, you know, keep you from going to church. Oh, I can go to church right now because I have to wash my car. serious. They uphold His word. They love His word. They love His standard. That means they conform Him to God and entrust it to Him to do it. Amen? Sometimes, you know, it's our hearts to see signs and wonders. It's our hearts to see souls transformed. And we're seeing that week to week. But our desire, our heart, our, our calling is this. That we will experience this in fullness. In his fullness. In his fullness. In his fullness. In his fullness. There is a presence. There is a glory. There is an authority that we're just experiencing right now in a degree. Amen. We're experiencing it in a degree and we're happy about it. Can you imagine if, 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 if you experience it in his fullness? Man, many of us will quit our jobs and, and just work here. And, and God, you're doing something great here. No, I'm going to invest my life into what you're doing. I'm going to build my life. I'm going to build my family upon what you're doing here. Not, not because it's River of Life, but it's you moving. It's you moving. Have you, have you heard of Silicon Valley before? It's a, it's a river where, where electronic stuff was booming. Computer was booming. And there was a need for people to work there. So many families uprooted themselves from all over the, the states. And they planted themselves in Silicon Valley because something was, was booming out of it. Amen. Can we do the same thing as what God is doing? Yeah. God is moving here. God is still us something great in here. Yeah. We're, not, we're not being called to put ourselves from San Antonio over here. But can we just plan and invest our lives in what God is doing here? Yeah. To be fully sold out. Amen. Amen. How bad? When we do, when we do, that's when, 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 when the world will, will come, when the people will see, hey, something great is going on in that place. Something great is going not for the glory of anybody, not for the glory of this place, but, you know, Jesus is lifted up. And his life is lived out in ordinary men and women like me. His life is not in this lived out through broken people like you and me. I don't care how messed up your life is right now. I don't care how mistakes were made. But as soon as you say yes and, and just welcome God in your life, He is going to come and He start rebuilding and start rebuilding. And whatever anointing is in this place, it's yours. It's going to be for your life. Yeah. Anointing of restoration, anointing of passion, anointing of love for souls, anointing for the Word of God, the love for the Word of God, anointing the desire to pray, it's yours. Because that's what we've been experiencing. And in this place. They, they met in the temple and from house to house. Okay? They met in the temple, which is the church. And they, used, they, they were satisfied with just going to church. They went from house to house. Okay? Are you in a small group? Yeah. Good, good. If you're not in a small group, man, we invite you. Let's do Acts together. Let's go back to the simplicity, the ancient path, the power of being together and, 